all-wheel drive system driving you everywhere apart from around the bend, illuminated traction control light, jerky movements while steering, strange noises from your wheel drive system. Sounds like you've got a Haldex fault. Hi guys, I'm Tim and we're back to give you a comprehensive insight into the Gen 4 and 5 Haldex all-wheel drive system. We're going to cover everything from the purpose of the system, a breakdown of all the key components, and it wouldn't be an ECU testing video without giving you some of the common faults, how to diagnose them, and the potential solutions to get you back on the road. But before that, if you enjoy our content and want to keep up to date with our latest uploads, hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. Thank you to those of you that are already subscribed, we really appreciate your support. Let's start with how it all works. The Haldex system is an oil pressure activated mechanical clutch coupling attached to the rear differential. This system allows a variable percentage of torque to be transferred between the front and rear axles to get the most traction, preventing wheel spin and understeer when rapidly accelerating or turning in suboptimal conditions. It achieves this by using data inputs from multiple systems within the vehicle, some of which include the engine speed sensor and the accelerator position sensor from the engine management system and wheel speed sensor data from the anti-lock brake system. This information is crucial for the Haldex controller to identify the need for additional traction and to manage the all-wheel drive system effectively. So if you've clicked on this video, it's likely that you have one or more of these symptoms with your all-wheel drive system loss of rear wheel drive, the traction control and or engine management light appearing on the dash, a binding sensation when turning the vehicle, a loss of traction under heavy acceleration and reduced performance. You may also have one or more of the following fault codes showing, such as C1112, U0114 or 01324 and so on. These can be caused by a number of things such as a faulty control module or clutch pump, damaged wiring or connectors, or mechanical issues. We'll go through exactly how to diagnose the root cause of the fault later on, but if you find your control module to be faulty during your diagnosis, then you can send it in to us for a full test and rebuild. The Haldex system has been implemented over various manufacturers since 2005, and through extensive research and development, these systems have evolved into a much smaller and more efficient package. As I'm sure you're aware, many VAG vehicles utilize various generations of this system, but it can also be found on some Volvos, Land Rovers and Fords. Fortunately, we offer a rebuild solution for all of them. But enough background, let's get into the diagnosis. We'll start with one of the most challenging faults, no communication. The most commonly found fault codes are 01324 and U0114. These are all-wheel drive, no communication related fault codes that will cause the same symptoms we have already described, such as warning lights, and in performance-based cars that use this system, a loss of traction when accelerating. If you get these fault codes when carrying out a full diagnostic scan, it would mean that the control module isn't communicating via the CAN bus and therefore not engaging the rear clutch assembly. If you are getting these codes, it is highly likely that your Haldex control module is faulty and will need to be rebuilt but there are a few checks you can complete before condemning the unit. As I mentioned earlier, these faults can be tricky to diagnose, as this system, like many other control modules in the vehicle, relies on signal inputs through the CAN bus. When there is no communication to the Haldex controller, other fault codes may be present that relate to the CAN bus, battery and ignition. If you do get any of these, it's best to rule them out first before proceeding, as misdiagnosis has been known to occur when other codes aren't addressed first. So what's the root cause of the no comms fault? The most common is internal component failure in the Haldex ECU itself. However, to rule out external causes of the no comms fault, check the ECU is receiving a good power supply and it has a good ground. On the Gen 5 Haldex ECU, there will be two power supplies, one permanent and one for ignition which should both read 12 volts when the ignition is on. If these check out okay, then check the CAN lines at the module connector with a scope. A good signal will be a sequentially synced waveform with no missing segments or voltage spikes. If there is no signal here, then you may have a CAN bus fault. If the power supply is low, then you will need to trace and rectify that issue before attempting to clear the code. If the power supply is good and the code doesn't clear, then the Haldex controller will need to be repaired. 
Now let's talk about diagnosing the Haldex pump. The pump is susceptible to water ingress and corrosion of the connector's pins. So always check these at the start of your diagnosis. Another way the pump can fail is when the oil filter becomes clogged due to improper maintenance. If this happens, the amount of oil pressure required to engage the clutch pack won't be sufficient, and it is likely to trigger traction or stability warning lights. If it is the pump that has failed, you may see codes like 00448 16671 or 16670. The method to diagnose the pump differs between the Gen 4 and Gen 5 Haldex system. For the Gen 4, you can test it with a multimeter switch to the ohm setting. Just probe both terminals in the pump's two-pin multiplug. A good pump will read between 5 and 8 ohms, but if the reading is above or below these numbers, then the pump is defective and will need replacing. As for the Gen 5, the issue generally lies with an internal system fault in the ECU as we mentioned before, but you should still check the wiring and connectors for any damage to rule out an external fault. You can also perform a resistance test between the pump's multiplug in the same way as with the Gen 4 system. However, a good reading here will be around 0.5 ohms. It's also worth noting that if you decide to remove the pump, it is best practice to drain the whole Haldex system, clean the filter and coupling to allow for the system to operate smoothly and without restriction. That wraps up our dive into the Haldex all-wheel drive system and its common faults. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment below and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest content. We look forward to seeing you on our next video.